How did David fulfill his oath to Jonathan made back in 1 Samuel 20? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of 2 Samuel on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 to 13. Before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So 2 Samuel chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. Now David said, Is there still anyone who is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was a servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba. Now when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba? He said, At your service. And the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul, to whom I may show the kindness of God? And Ziba said to the king, There is still a son of Jonathan, who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, Where is he? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is in the house of Maker, the son of Amil, in low deeper. Then King David sent and brought him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amil, from Lodeber. And now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth? And he answered, Here is your servant. So David said to him, Do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continually. Then he bowed himself and said, What is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, I have given to your master's son all that belonged to Saul and to all his house. You therefore and your sons and your servants shall work the land for him, and you shall bring in the harvest that your master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread at my table always. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. And Ziba said to the king, According to all that my lord the king has commanded his servant, so will your servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Micah. And all who dwelt in the house of Ziba were servants of Mephibosheth. So Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he ate continually at the king's table, and he was lame in both his feet. Following the description of all the battles of David in chapter 8, we come to an interesting story back in chapter 9. To fully understand it, we must remember back to an oath made by David to Jonathan back in 1 Samuel 20. So let's reread 1 Samuel 20, 14 and 15. And you shall not only show me the kindness of the Lord while I still live, that I may not die, but you shall not cut off your kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord has cut off every one of the enemies of David from the face of the earth. It is here, when David is about to begin his life on the run, that Jonathan and him made a covenant that David would show kindness to the house of Jonathan, no matter what Jonathan's father, King Saul, did. David reigned for seven and a half years in Hebron and was now king over all Israel in Jerusalem for an indeterminate amount of time by this point in chapter 9. Whatever this amount was is not important, but what is important is that now was the time for David to fulfill his oath. But was there an oath to be fulfilled? For Saul's house had largely become extinct with the death of Ishbosheth. Was there anyone in the house of Jonathan remaining? Well, there was a servant from the house of Saul around, a man named Ziba, and he informed David that one son of Jonathan, Mephibosheth, remained, a man who was lame in the feet. Mephibosheth was introduced to us in chapter 4 as being five years old when Saul and Jonathan died. Since Mephibosheth is said to be a young son here, then he is even older than he was when David began reigning in Jerusalem, perhaps bringing our timeline forward eight to ten years into David's reign there making David around 45 here. Ziba tells Mephibosheth, David that Mephibosheth is living in the house of Maker from Lodeber, which our map shows us was likely near Mahanaim on the east side of the Jordan where Ishbosheth reigned. David commanded that Mephibosheth be brought to him, which of course he was. 
Now, I'm sure Mephibosheth was surprised to stand before the king, especially knowing the history between the house of Saul and the house of David. Was Mephibosheth going to be punished? For he might have thought that. Far from it. For David is going to raise Mephibosheth up. When David took the throne, he gained all that was Saul's by virtue of becoming king. That would all be restored to Mephibosheth and his family, so that their family would continue to have an inheritance in Israel among the tribe of Benjamin. Ziba and his household were commanded by David to be Mephibosheth's servants instead of David's servants, to work the land for Mephibosheth, a task that Ziba gladly took on. As for Mephibosheth, he would eat at David's table as if he were one of the king's sons. What a turn of events for Mephibosheth, from living in exile, lame, with no land, to regaining his inheritance and being treated like royalty with servants to go with it. And all because David was a man of his word to Jonathan. For us today, when we make promises with others, we had better keep them, for in doing so we will show our integrity and show how our lives have been changed for the better through obedience to Jesus. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of 2 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1 to 8, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.